the course of about 100 years, Mexico went from a Spanish colony to a constitutional monarchy to a dictatorship to a democracy with several other kinds of governments in between. During that time, the country underwent a war for independence, was invaded by France twice, lost Texas, California, Nevada and New Mexico to the US and had itself a revolution because of said dictatorship. This period between 1821 and 1920 was a busy ass time and in this video we're going to attempt to untangle this immensely complicated period of Mexican history without having a brain hemorrhage. Napoleon Bonaparte. Ah, see what I did there? You thought I was going to say Miguel Hidalgo. True, Hidalgo did help start the first proper uprising against Nueva España. However, if it wasn't for Napoleon's invasion of Spain in 1817 and the battle for the Iberian Peninsula happened over in Europe, the Mexican Criollos, who were beginning to feel properly Mexican at this point, wouldn't have noticed that the Spanish had let their guard down so to speak. As a result, they had an excuse to say to themselves, you know what? Screw Spain. Spain is a smouldering ruin. Now Mexico, there is a country of promise. FYI, it's unclear whether Miguel Hidalgo actually used those exact words, but you know, he might have. The truth is that neither Hidalgo nor Napoleon were the sole causers of the war for Mexican independence. Both men were massively influential, but history is rarely as simple as a series of events caused by, quote, great men, unquote. Some people argued that the cause for the Mexican War for Independence wasn't one man or a group of men, but in fact the Age of Enlightenment itself. The educated Mexican-born Criollos had heard and understood the rhetoric of the writers at the time, and it was this that inspired them to revolt. The Age of Enlightenment went questioning the things that had previously been deemed as normal, and all of this questioning, all of this asking why, this is what led to the Mexican War for Independence in the end. I mean, maybe. It's a decent theory. Skip forward 10 years and the Mexican War for Independence was won by Mexico. Obviously. I mean, if Mexico hadn't won this war, then this video would be titled A Crash Course in New Spanish History. However, it's not. Mexican won and the war was over. After that, though, the fighting really began. You see, despite the fact that the Spanish were no longer in charge, the Mexican caste system still very much persisted, and so, as a result, the Mexican people were divided on the issue of what kind of country Mexico should be. Broadly speaking, you had the conservative, church-loving monarchists who felt that everything should stay the way it was, except with no Spanish people in charge, and the liberal, proletariat-loving reformists who wanted to give things back to the people, redistribute the wealth, and generally shake things up a bit. In the end, the reform one, but they took their sweet old time about it, and it wasn't until 1920 that the Mexico we know today emerged. Jumping back to 1821 though, and at first Mexico was a constitutional Catholic monarchy with Augustin I as the country's emperor. This empire had flag, territory, and everything, and it certainly looked like it could go to the distance. However, it was not to be, and Augustin's reign lasted from 1821 all the way to 1823, when the Mexicans decided that being ruled by the Mexican Empire felt an awful lot like being ruled by the Spanish Empire. Augustin was exiled, and when he returned to Mexico in 1824 with his family, he was executed. This first Mexican Empire was followed by an uprising of anti-monarchist ideas and a temporary provisional government which lasted for less than a year and was replaced by the more permanent First Mexican Republic. At least they thought it would be permanent. Thinking it would be permanent, the people who formed this government did not call it the First Mexican Republic, because of course that implies that there would be a second one, which of course there was, but the government at the time didn't know that. These Mexicans called their new government the Estados Unidos Mexicanos, the United Mexican States. This government was a big ass deal because it was the first democratically elected government Mexico had ever had, and it was the government which signed Mexico's first constitution. Now I say democratically elected, but much like early American democracy, voting was limited to a select few people. This government was federalist, which meant they wanted to give more power to the individual Mexican states and limit the power of the central government. This was the type of government preferred by the Liberal Party, who were liberal in an economic sense, as they preferred the idea of unrestricted capitalism to government intervention of the market, and who also believed in a social form of liberalism, which meant secularism. However, despite all this seeming potential, the government lasted just 11 years, with the presidency changing hands 15 times between 10 different men. In fact, it's even more more ridiculous than that. Between 1st of April 1833 and 24th of April 1834, two men, Valentin Gomez Farias and Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana, argued back and forth over the presidency, with the result being the presidency changed hands seven times. Seven bloody times in just over a year. I wash my jeans 
less than that. Now it's worth pointing out that not all of these presidency changes from 1824 to 1920 were due to infighting. Some people fell ill, some people went off to fight wars and so just handed power over to someone else. Antonio Lopez de Santa Anna did this a lot. There were coups as well though, don't get me wrong. In fact, between 1824 and 1920, hardly a single Mexican president actually completed their term, with the average Mexican presidency lasting just 15 months during this period. Anyway, after the ridiculous Lopez de Santa Ana Farias fiasco, a new president was eventually elected, Miguel Barragan. Barragan was from the Conservative Party who wanted radically different things and so as a result he abolished the Constitution of 1824 and replaced it with the kind of government the Conservatives wanted. They believed in a centralised government which was strong, Catholic and ruled in much the same way that the Spanish did during their colonial rule with the casteism, classism and racism which that brought with it. The new government Barragan set up is referred to now as the Centralist Republic of Mexico, but at the time it was simply called the Mexican Republic. During the Centralist Republic of Mexico, the Mexicans ended up fighting a really strange war with the French known as the Pastry War. The story goes that a French pastry chef had his boat destroyed by Mexicans while it was sitting in a harbour in Mexico. The French had a pretty decent relationship with Mexico up until this point and had been trading with them since the Spanish had occupied Mexico all of those years ago. However, as the Mexican government was going through something of a rough patch, they didn't really have time to do things like, you know, enforce the law. And so when the pastry chef had his boat destroyed, rather than arresting anyone or paying compensation to the pastry chef, the Mexican government just shrugged their shoulders and said, well, what do you want us to do about it? The French responded by demanding the Mexican government pay out 60,000 pesos in compensation. The boat is said to be worth around 1,000 pesos. The government refused, the French invaded Mexico, fought a three-month war with them, and only relented when the Mexican government promised to pay 600,000 pesos compensation for the boat. Although, as of 2017, the Mexicans have yet to pay the French a single penny for this boat. As well as fighting off the French, the Centralist Republic also had to deal with internal uprisings, which eventually culminated in a huge land loss to the United States. However, before all that, the Mexican government was changed again, the Centralist experiment having been a massive failure, and the Second Federal Republic of Mexico was established in 1846. In 1848, the Mexican-American War ended with Mexico selling off 2.4 million square kilometers of land to the US and exchange for just under 20 million US dollars in total. In 1853, they sold the US even more land for a further 10 million US dollars. The lands the US gained included what is now Texas, California, Oregon, Nevada, and New Mexico. The loss of Texas is particularly notable for the story of the Alamo, which is beyond the scope of this video, but here's some nice footage of the Alamo, which my girlfriend and I visited last year. Most of Mexico's land loss to the US is often blamed on Antonio Lopez de Santa Anna, who by this point was pretty much addicted to being president of Mexico. Before he died in 1876, he had been president a ridiculous 11 times, and by the end of his career, he had a reputation for being something of a tyrannical dick. He wasn't the only person to be president of Mexico multiple times, however. Lots of people did this, and it speaks volumes for how crazy the political situation was during this 100 years. In 1857, Benito Juarez became president, and in an almost unprecedented turn of events, served out a full term as president. He was only the third person to have done this since the country's beginnings just under 40 years and just over 20 presidents ago. Juarez was also notable for being the first indigenous president of Mexico and for being something of a hero to most people in modern Mexico. At the time though, not everybody liked the guy. For starters, he had to deal with the reform war. This kicked off when Juarez demanded the church give up some of its land. In response, the conservatives started a civil war. At around the same time, Time, Juarez also had to deal with the second French invasion of Mexico. This invasion happened when Napoleon, not that one, the other one, the third one, his nephew, tried to reinstate a second Mexican empire with Maximilian I of the Habsburg family, the family notable for its facial defects brought on by generations of inbreeding 
as its ruler. The French were helped by the British, the Spanish, and the Conservatives within Mexico who didn't like Juarez and who really, really wanted a centralist monarchist government just like the good old days when the Spanish were in charge. Juarez saw things differently. He defeated the French and the Conservatives, reinstated the Federalist government, made education mandatory for children, built a railway system, and introduced a rural police force. By 1872, Juarez had served more than five terms as president and died during his fifth and final term. It was Juarez who made Mexico more or less what it is today. However, Mexico wasn't stable just yet, and a mere four years later, Porforio Diaz took power. Porforio did some pretty great things for Mexico, making it more industrialized, wealthy, and more capitalist as well, but he was also a complete and utter dictator. Freedom of speech was banned, there was voter suppression, there was fraud. All of this was done to try and curb the instability of Mexico during this tumultuous time. However, it didn't work, and the Porfiriato, the period of dictatorship from 1876 to 1910, named after the dictator who made it possible, eventually led to the Mexican Revolution in 1910. That revolution ended in 1920, and yet another constitution and another form of government which, by and large, is the constitution and the form of government which Mexico still uses today. We'll talk about that in the next video, but for now, thanks for watching.